Why y'all let this dude do this? Y'all got to talk to COVID the right way. Y'all too goddamn nice. Hey, Kofi ain't going to go. Did he want to see? He want to hit the like button. He want to hit the live button right now. Because he want he to try to. He try to <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He want to instigate. He want to instigate right now. Listen, Kofi, we ain't got time waiting on you to share the show. You going to yeah. you say, hold on, y'all. I'm trying to share the show. Right. Or you can start talking. I could, I'm sure to show well shoot. I think we live. Yeah, we we've been live. live. Now you know you hit the live button uh two minutes ago. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, shoot. Uh, see? Oh hold on, shoot. I done let me turn that other damn thing off right there. Davis uh, in the chat looking like what y'all talking about. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody in there. You know. sitting right there in the chat. Oh, and, oh yeah. It's four people in here already, man. Y'all, peace, 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 brother Chavis. Peace. Hey, y'all. Oh, it's eight people in here. Y'all like and share the show, man. See, here we go. Now you finna say like and share the show on all this. Yeah, you know, like and share the show. I'm finna share it on my timeline. I don't care what any horrid Sean Cal funny is talking about. It goes in one Ooh. ear and out the other when it comes to me, because I ain't studying it. I ain't studying it. I'm finna share it to my page, and then that's it. And then y'all can do what y'all gotta do. We I'm live. telling mama, y'all always fight. Up, George. Hey, that's what. That's hey. I, that's how you show. They say that's how you show your love. You fight and stuff all the time and fuss it all the time. Cause I know that's what me and my old lady do, man. We. We fussing and fighting all the time, man. That we say we that that means we love each other. You ain't fighting and fussing, you don't love each other. So, man, will you go ahead and share the show? I am. I'm Somebody hear your soliloquy about fighting, fussing, and love? I'm sure, you, man. It's all good. See, I'm done already. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, y'all. Let me go back. Let me jump back over here. Like I said, please. Um. Like and uh, share the show. Hey, baby, my baby in the chat. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, if Sean get out of line, baby, you let him give you get him the business. She on my okay? side. She on my side. You give him the business, okay? You give him the business. But uh, first, I want to say, um, let me see if I can do this like this. Okay. First, I want to say, ETM Hotel, do our do our do our Aku, do our nature, uh, Fatmu Alafie, Fatmu Riri. Uh, Majuba Iba E Gungun, Majuba Iba E E Gungun, uh, E Gungun Kiki E Gungun. Um, I always want to give honor and praise to the ancestors because without the ancestors, we wouldn't be here. We are our ancestors. Um, welcome back to Coke Fight Side TV. Um, Sean, how yeah. do I do this uh thing real quick, man? I'm, go, I thought dude. I did it. No, I'm, I'm saying I see it on my screen. He stay cutting up. Yeah, he stay cutting up, baby. He stay cutting up. But um, See? how you how you do the thing now where it's showing all the boxes in here? I thought I I did that. No, nah, you ain't did nothing, man. I see view speaker. Switch switch to gallery view. Yeah, that's what I got. Gallery view. That's what I got. Peace, you sister Kayla. You ain't switch nothing to gallery view. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, alternate F two. Let's see, alternate F2. It is on gallery. I got it on. Okay. I can, this here is view, view, picture view. This okay. here is get no. Okay, that's good. Get, that, I don't I don't see it, but shit, it's on there. But yeah, peace to everybody in the chat right now. Please like and share the show. Uh tell a friend to tell a friend um about the show. Um we got another show um for you today. It's a little bit controversial. Um, but uh, we gonna get through it. Uh, I got brother T'Challa uh, Bangara. I got any Red Sean Calfani, Vasa Nicolo Gullah, Sutek Akandi Uyani Uluwa. Uh, I, did I say your name right? Did I say your name all the way right? You almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was gonna get it too, man. But um, yeah, y'all got anything, man? Before um, I get into the presentation. Yeah, man. Peace to the people. Peace to the chat. Uh, say a lot of y'all need. Make sure y'all like and share the show as you come in to those that are like-minded. 
Um, you, you see the title, so let's let's check out what cover we got up his sleeve. Peace to everybody on the panel, everybody in the chat. We appreciate the support. And let's see what uh what this show be about. Like and share the show, fam. ETM Hotel, Rennie Sean. Welcome to Peace. My name is Sean Lafayette. I'm my West African family out there, man. I just want to uh, say, man, like the show, share the show, tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, COVID live. So uh, let's let's see what's going on and uh, continue to support. For those who do support, continue to support. Appreciate it. Share my show real. I mean, share my uh, screen. Share computer sound. Uh, peace, everybody. I won't be able to see the chat today, but peace to everybody in the chat and peace to all the brothers on the panel. Damn, I sure forgot about you, boss. I'm being quiet. I'm about to get to working in the background and listen to y'all. But that's what I'm going to be doing and be getting to work. All right, uh, let me shut my computer. Not my computer, but uh, my uh, thing off. Okay, I got my screen. Let me know my screen sharing, y'all. That full screen is on the uh, other end back there. I mean, on uh, full screen on uh, YouTube. I see it. All right. Uh, Again, peace, 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 family, peace, peace of Black African power. Um, I hope y'all can hear me pretty well. Um, it's kind of pouring down. We got a storm that came through here, so it's lightning and it's raining kind of heavy. So hopefully y'all can uh, hear me pretty good. Uh, I, if I get talking too loud, that's why, because it's raining real hard outside. But uh, today's presentation is called Masturbation and Homosexuality do not exist among the Aka and the uh, Agudu people in Central Africa. Uh, Sean touched on uh, Central Africa today uh, with the Yaka presentation. So go check that out on my Sawargi Clan YouTube channel. I always had to pull a disclaimer out here before I get started. Uh, my disclaimer is I am not a teacher, but merely a student sharing information. And that information provided for the educational purpose only. And if you are a doubt, do the research and have it verified by someone qualified. I reserve the right to change the focus of this presentation to shut down, sell, or exchange the terms of use at my own discretion. All uh, trademark, design rights, copyrights, registers, names, model, logos, avatars, or signals, or marks used or cited by this website are the property of their respective owners. I reserve the right to add information as it comes available in the future. Adapt to changes, improve information as it comes available uh, in, uh, in the future. Inputs wanted, changes, additions, deletions are encouraged. Um, y'all let me know if y'all can still hear me clearly, man. Just let me know if y'all can still hear me clearly. Um, man, you good, bro. Go in. Okay. We'll tell you when you ain't. All right. All right everybody been following me. You know, this is my saying, um, my phrase, as I learn, we all learn. Um, and I'm going to continue to demonstrate um, this phrase. Let's get this culture. It's another one of my phrases. And this new one, we must uh, not let our ancestors um, down. All right, this is my outline or my bullet points. A brief information on the Aka people and the Agudu people. Barry Himley interview with the Aka and the Agudu. Uh, what is the Aka and the uh, Ngadu have in common besides the same geographical location? Um, it don't exist here. Um, the ban of homosexuality in African countries, some of the punish punishment by Afri African countries for practicing homosexuality. Homosexuality promotes an un-African, according to African elites. And last but finally, my long um, conclusion. Um, and with that, I want to first say, um, and, I, and I didn't even finish my disclaimer, that was, but I had another disclaimer. I didn't even get finished with it, but just reading from my bullet points, um, my outline, um, uh, this presentation is not to uh, um, 
to make anyone feel bad. It is not to belittle um, anyone. This is not what that presentation is about. It is just to bring information about um, these two groups of people in Central Africa um, and also highlight some of the other things, um, um, the talk around the, the subject matter dealing with these two people and, and, and uh, the subject matter dealing with homosexuality uh, in Africa. So according to the studies, children secure uh, congelitized, often uh, social uh, security assists with labels, conferring social status, securing rights and properties, and inheriting providing continuous through reincarnation and maintaining the family lineage and sat satisfying emotional needs. Parenthood therefore appears to have more of an arguably deeper root in African communities when compared to industrial uh, countries. So African cultures have a deeper meaning when it comes to children. And people already know when I talk, when we talk about marriage, you can't separate procreation. We know procreation brings forth children. We know that they, in most communities in, uh, in Africa, uh, children are an asset to the family uh, as well as the community. Children are a blessing. And most of the ethnic groups believe that through um, um, rebirthing, I mean, birthing, uh, it, uh, re, um, the ancestors are coming back. And they also believe that the ancestors are blessing the womb in order for um, um, the uh, man and woman to have a child. Aka and the Agadu viewpoint, sex is linked to reproduction and building a family. Aka in the Agudu viewpoint, sex is linked to reproduction and building the family. So we know there's three, so we know there's steps. We know, um, which going back to the uh, uh, rites of passages, we know we go to puberty, the adulthood, which is you're being recognized uh, in a society as an adult. And, and, and with adulthood, now you are preparing to be married. Um, so you have marriage and then you have procreation. So marriage and procreation is important in African culture. Barry and Bunny Himmler had been studied the Aka and the Agudu people in Central Africa for many years before they began to especially study the group's sexuality. As the reports in the journals African Studies monographs, the married couple of anthropologists from Washington State University decided to, uh, to systematically study sexual behavior after the severe campfire discussion with married mental ages, a car men who mentioned in the passing that they had sex three or four times during the night. At first, they thought it was just men telling their stories, but we talked to women and they verified that the men's assertions. So, these two Europeans at the bottom are, are, are professors. They are a married couple. They both are professors at Washington State University. They are also anthropologists. Um, they've been in Africa. They have been in Africa for many, many, many years um, um, around the problem of ma malaria. They went around there to help out with the mal malaria issue uh, in Central Africa. Um, they've been around the Akkad, the Agudu, and the numerous other different ethnic groups um, in Africa. They study um, the Aku and the Agudu people. And right now we're gonna talk about a discussion um, or an interview that um, this anthropologist Bobby, Bobby Himblet had with some of the Aka uh, people dealing with sex. And we know already through the assertions of the Aka and the uh, Ingadudu that sex leads to children. And we know children are an asset to the community and is an asset um, to the family. In turning in a decade studies of sex practice, the Hiblets uh, formally confirmed that the campfire stories were no more of a fish tale. Married Aka and the Ingadudu men and women constantly reported of having sex multiple times in a single night. But in the process of verifying this, Himlet also uh, uh, incidentally found that homosexuality and masturbation appears to be foreign in both groups. So um, again, as um, the anthropologists began to interview the uh, Akai people and they began to talk about sex, this is another reason why you don't see masturbation 
um, as much because they have sex three or four times a night. They believe that um, nightfall, you should be having sex multiple times, but they understand though through sex, through marriage and sex brings children, which children is an asset which brings on um, so many different facets, wealth, um, producing more stuff, getting more things done um, um, faster, um, um, bringing, uh, bringing other families together through marriage and reproduction, I mean, reproducing, um, so many different assets. Um, but marriage, a car, and a dude, I mean, well, so this is foreign to these ethnic groups in Africa, uh, in Africa. While the Aka and the Gudu live in the same general regions in our areas in the Central African marks, the tropical forest, their culture is distinct. Hold on, y'all. And I think, and that exactly what done happened, y'all. Hold on one second, y'all. All right. Here, go ahead. I kind of mixed up the slides a little bit, but it's okay. While the Akai and the Dudu live in the same general region, the Arab Central Africa marks the tropical forest. Their culture are distinct. The Aku are for for our foregoings according to Hamlet. Gender uh, equalism among the uh, the Aka. It is about uh, pronouncing as a human society gets. Women may hunt even or their own or often control distribution of resource. The Ngudu, the contrast are slashed and burnt farmers with a stable location and a significant gender inequality with men typically dominating over um, the women. So these two groups of people live in the same region, the Aka and the uh, Ngadudu. And one are hunters, um, and you have another uh, another group, which is uh, the farmers. The hunters are the Aka and the Agudu are the farmers. And they live in the same geographical location. Their practices are basically the same, but um, toward the women, they are more, uh, the Aka people are more of uh, women and men are equal. No one is above uh, each other. But with the Igudu people, um, their perception uh, um, is that the men is higher um, than the uh, women. The women have less opportunities than the men do in the Ngudu people, uh, 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 people of uh, society. But in the Aka society, men and women are equal, so they have equal opportunities. What is the Aka and Agudu um, in common besides geographical? In this in the both cultures, men and women view sexual intercourse as a kind of work at night. So, like I said, at nightfall, they believe that you should be having sex. And the purpose of this work is the production of children and the critical matter in the areas with very high infant mortality rate. Semen is understood by the Aka and the Agudu to be necessary not only to conception, but also to fetal development. A woman who is already pregnant will see having intercourse. And I can't even see this because of this. Hold on, let me move this thing. I can't even see now. Um, intercourse as continuing to uh, to the help of the fetus. Now, this is according to the Aka because we know in other different traditions, you know, once a, uh, a woman gets pregnant uh, in some ethnic groups, you know, it's just according to how far she is, they stop, it becomes a taboo. Uh, they believe certain things will happen to the child if uh, the man and woman continue to have intercourse um, while pregnant. But um, the Aka people, you know, they, they believe that it is, is, is healthy for the fetus. The Aka and Agudu speaks on sex as searching for children. That's not to say that they don't enjoy having sex. Clearly they do. The Hamlet relays on songs of a group, which I'm not going to get into that, but he was just talking about as he was interviewing them. Uh, some kids was actually reserving, uh, were actually looking at um, a man and a woman having sex and they created a song about it. And he just, just asked the act through the interview, what do they believe about the song? The song, I'm not going to talk about the song. I feel like the song was kind of... Um, derogatory, so I'm not going to even talk about what they said in the song. Y'all can pause it later on and come back and look at actually what he asked him and what he, um, he said. But besides, while the individual who interviewed, the, they like the song, 
made it clear that sex is pleasurable for those folks, something that brings couples closer. They also made clear that babies are a goal of sex. So one a cool women, it is fun to have sex, but it is it is to look for children. So their whole purpose of having sex is to have children. And we know children are a asset or a benefit to the family, extended family, uh, as well as the community. It is the strongest culture focus on sex as reproduction to the reason masturbation and homosexual practices seem to be virtually unknown among the Aka and the Agudu that isn't clear, but the Hamlet did find that there, there, uh, there are uh, informants whom they knew well from years of field work were not aware of these practices, did not have terms of them. And in the case of the Aka, had a hard time even understanding about what the researchers were asking when they asked about homosexuality behavior. So they hadn't even encountered um, this type of practice. So they really didn't understand where uh, the anthropologists um, were coming from when they was asking them um, about this type of practices. Um, the Igudu were familiar with the concept of homosexuality behavior but no words exist for it. And they said that they did not know of any such relation in our, in or around the village. Men who had traveled to the capital of uh, Beju said it exists in a city and was called PD, the French word for para daria, or from behind. So the word means that PD just means from behind. So they didn't encounter this type of practices until they travel outside um, um, their village into another town or to another capital. And both societies do not have a word uh, in their vocabulary uh, describing uh, um, the act. The Agudu were familiar with the concept of homosexual behavior, but no words existed for it. And they said they did not know of any such relationship in or around the village. Men, same thing. I, I do this every time when I'm asleep. But after interviewing the individual, Himmler concluded homosexuality and masturbations are rare or non-existent in these two cults, not because they are frowned upon or punished, but because they are not part of the cultural model of sexuality, either in an ethnic group. So we know that both groups specified that sex brings on children. And again, I keep reiterating, children are an asset. Even when you study other different ethnic groups in Africa and you, you study their rites of passage. And I'm gonna talk about this in my con conclusion. Well, I'm not gonna even discuss it because I have a long conclusion when I get through, but I didn't hear is just a little description of this anthropologist here, but I already told y'all who he was. He's a professor and he's an anthropologist. The guy that interviewed them, he's a professor at Washington State. He's an anthropologist. He's been doing field work in Africa, Central Africa, for quite a while now, and he lived among these people. The Aka, also known as the Baaka or the Bimbisi, or a group of so-called pygmy hunters, gatherer in Central Africa, Republican within the population between 15 to 30,000. The Aka have their own languages. The Ka and the culture included a strong preference of forest life high mobility rituals, elephant hunting, and trading relationships with the Ingudu former population. And again, like I said, the hunters are the Aka and the Ugudu people are the former. The diet includes 63 different plant species, 20 insects, including caterpillars, which are a seasoned delicacy, honey, and from eight species of bees and 28 game animals, there have never been a report of the Aka women dying from male violence. And the Igudu people or the uh, Bangudu, uh, Ingudu, or Bantu uh, substance farmers who live in the eastern parts of the equator and the western part of the oriental province of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The, the Bagodo are the branch of the Mongo clusters with the estimate population in 1990 of 450,000 to 5,000. They usually speak the Logodo but sometimes use uh, Ligingo languages. The Logogo is related to the Lia language. Egnolug Ekno, uh, reports that the Igodo lives in the Mediterranean River and north of Ikili and had a, a population of 220,000 in 1995. The Bagando lived in the tropical rainforest of the uh, Congo, Bazan, 
Daily temperatures range around 20 Celsius, 60 Fahrenheit to 30 Celsius, 80 Fahrenheit, and annual rainfalls is about 2,000 millimeters, uh, 79 inches. The Bargondo staple crops of cassava, uh, cassava, and they grow uh, bananas, yams, maize, rice, some vegetables. They are only uh, cash crops. It's coffee introduction in the 1960s. They raise goats, pigs, chicken, ducks, and su supplements of their diet through hunting, fishing, um, and gathering. Now, the ba uh, the Bargondo have traditionally seen uh, the Barbos as human beings rather than animals. However, due to ethnic stresses and political discoveries following by the civil wars in 1992 uh, through 2005, a period to social and cultural interchanges with the ethnic groups, this perception has changed. The younger Bagadu or the Ngadu will now sometimes hunt bonos as a bushman and bushmeat. And they're just basically talking about now they are starting to hunt these uh, chimpanzees that they looked at as a um, as human human beings at one particular time, um, which is also uh, historically called uh, the pygmy chin, uh, ch uh, chimp, chimp, uh, chimp, uh, uh, chimpanzees. Uh, and less than often doors aggressive chimpanzees, it is often endangered great apes and one of the two species to make up the genius pans and others being commonly uh, chan uh, uh, chan uh, chimpanzees. So at one particular time, they looked at these uh, chimpanzees as human beings, but now as um, <clears throat> things begin to get scarce and um, they begin to hunt these things uh, for survival um, as bushmeat. Now, out of 54 countries in Africa, homosexuality is outlawed in 34 African countries. So I have a map up here. You have in the blue, you have same-sex marriages. So you have down here at the bottom, homosexuality legally, but not uh, recognition. These are the areas in gray, illegal, but unenforced. You have these areas here in yellow, punished by prison. You have these areas here, all these areas here, life in prison. You have these areas here, enforced death penalty is these areas um, in here. In the Sudan, Somalia, Somalia land, Mauritania, and North Nigeria, homosexuality is punished by death. In Uganda, Tanzania, and Sierra Leone, offenders can receive life imprisonment for homosexual acts, although the laws is not enforced in Sierra Leone. In addition to criminalizing homosexuality, Nigeria has enacted a legislation that would make it illegal for heterosexual family members a lie allies and friends of the LGBT people to be supported. The degree of which the laws are enforced very greatly. Uganda has seen a flurry of recent anti-gay arrests while the Gambia has persecuted anyone under the anti-Solomon law since the changes of the government in 2017. Even when now enforced, such laws prolong the stigma attached to homosexuality and provides a justification for homophobic behavior. Alan uh, M. Mose, uh, a Mawalian researcher for the University of Birds in Norway, told them they give people the chance to say, we don't like homosexuals because they are criminals. So in certain societies, they look at this practice as being criminal or criminal activity, which can result in death, can result in life imprisonment, can result up into 15 years in prison, can result to being exiled from um, the community. Africans among world most religious people. And around 93 of the Sub-Saharan Africans are either Christians, 63%, or Muslims, 30%, make up the continent, uh, one of the most religious uh, religious in the world. These believe influence the facets of people lives, including the attitudes of the LGBTQ um, community. So a lot, um, when we know that, um, Africa has become uh, religion out uh, when it comes to those foreign religions, Islam, um, Christianity, um, and Judaism. Judaism. So um, some of the research, researchers are saying that this is the reason why the activity, not the activity, but the penalties are so stiff or they do not recognize uh, this practice at all. Or this practice is illegal because of uh, the people in Africa has become so uh, uh, religion out. Most religion texts say that the homosexuals is problematic. Writings of Amy 
uh, Amazic and America Socialists uh, in our articles of the controversial. More religion peoples are more likely to take these religions' per perceptions seriously. When a large proportion of people are highly dedicated to the religion, everyone within the country tends to develop more uh, conservative views. Muslims and Christian leaders are often vocal opposed to gay sex, and studies show that African media often quotes the religious officials when discussing homosexuality, much more so than a country such as the United States. Homosexuality promotes an un-African. This is, according to some of the elite people here, African elites, which includes political religions and community leaders, often claim that homosexuality practices are an important Western evil. You know, I'd have heard that before. Long-term Zimbabwe leader uh, Robert Mugaga called homosexuality un-African and a white disease. Ugandan President Euro uh, Musevi has said it is a Western import. In, in the aftermath of the recent sentences of the two Zimbabwe gay men, we saw that the U.S. ambassador of Zim, Zimbab uh, Zambia say he has har horrified by 15 years jail terms. The Zambian bishop called the fellowship citizens to protect their own values and cultures outside of the influence. Now, this is my conclusion, and we can build a little bit off of my conclusion. This is a long conclusion. Um, there has been talks of pre-colonial Africans had gay sex and little evidence, and I am not saying that homosexuality practices do, do not exist today in Africa. They do. Doing many research, I found in Africa, foreign com uh, foreigners coming into Africa slavery, uh, and uh, hold on, hold on. I found it after foreigner coming into Africa slavery and colonization. This is just talking about my research that I have done and the activity that I found in Africa was always um, doing co uh, colonialism or through slavery. But there are talks too, uh, which I'll get into about they saying this activity was going on before pre-colonization. There's talk of ancient sand rocks paintings near Guru in Zimbabwe dating back 2000 years show suggested same sex sexual relationship dating to a time of the Bushmen. I was unsuccessful finding any paintings, but I did find an image from this, this journal called An Exploratory Journey of Cultural Visual Literature, Literature of Non-Conforming, Gender Representations from a Pre-Colonial Sub-Saharan Afri uh, Africa, with supposedly evidence, but it looks like an Egyptian carving, which it is I, from this journal that I was reading. Um, they was talking about this same sand, this a supposedly sand rock painting from the sand people that existed over 2000 years ago in Zimbabwe. Like I said, unfortunately, I was able to find some of those paintings on the rocks, but nothing in what they was talking about that can resort to um, homosexuality. And the picture in the journal that they put up on it, it was not a picture from uh, or, or art from the sand people. It actually was a picture from uh, from Egypt. Um, and, but we'll get into that. I, uh, supposedly evidence, but uh, hold on, congender, pre-colonial Sub-Saharan African was supposedly evidence, but it looks like Egyptian carvings of the image. But I also found people using wrong images all the time and interpret pictures wrong all the time as we have seen in Egypt, Kemet with their abstract art. We see that all the time with uh, Kemet depictions. Um, we are we are one would take it the wrong way. All information have I have come across, like the suggestion of the Ethiopian men called the Ashantines, cross-dressed, um, wore women clothes, performed tasks, usually even uh, um, reserved for females and occasionally had sexual relationships. But the Akka people were at homes and took care of the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, this, I should have space this out. All information I have come across like the suggestion of the Ethiopian men called the Asha Times cross-dressed and wore women clothes, performed tasks usually reserved for women, and occasionally had sexual relationships. But the Aka people were at home and took care of, uh, of their kids and even tried to breastfeed. But there were they were heterosexual men. But if one would take um take as they are trying to uh, take it as they was trying to uh, and I should have reread this, were trying to be looking, um, I mean, what basically I was saying, those who are looking afar, you know, can make those types of accusations. Um, and I'm trying to give you some 
I'm, I'm running down some of the all the logistics of the information that I found talking about homosexuality um, in Africa. So I'm trying to name like a lot of these different tribes and even the people that was observing some of these activities never did go like um, the anthropologist Hibley did. He lived amongst these people. He talked about um, their sexuality, what sexuality, uh, what what their sexuality meant to them, um, and a um, and et cetera. So I'm just making a statement that even with the Aka people that I'm talking about, those people was deemed um, to be the best fathers in the world. These people, these men, was actually at home with their children. And, you know, they took it amongst themselves. I did a whole presentation on it. I'm not going to go into that, but you can go look at that. I think it's Black Fathers, um, the Aka people. I don't know what it is, but you can go. Um, um, I'll find it in a minute, man. You can go on. It was a pretty interesting um, presentation. I have suggested. Um, so, um, and with the Ethiopian men that I'm talking about, the Ashatan people, even these are suggestions that people are making, you know, and even with some of the words that the African goth that they were, you know, just because it may look like it was something um, a woman would wear, it doesn't mean that the men was being women. But even if that was the case and they was doing these practices, when you look at the uh, the Ashantan people, this was doing co uh, colonialization. This was not pre-colonial. Um, but the... Um, uh, but the Aka people, boy, I know I, this is all bunched up, y'all. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to read. Um, but the Aka people were home and took care of their kids. Now, I have seen suggested evidence of men in Ghana and from the Ashanti in the Ka um, that dress as women in a particular homosexual act which dates back to 1950, which after slavery, the colonialism, during the 1600s in the kingdoms of the Mata in the Southern Africa, sometimes labeled mo mo uh Monotopia, located around the modern-day South Africa, the Christian missionaries in 1606 provided evidence of gender blurs among the, the Chavdi tribes in uh, their encounter with the cross-dressing men uh, known as the Ch uh, Chabida, and across suggesting information about the women of the warriors of Dahomey, which is current, uh, which is current-day Benin, uh, could marry younger women, according to the anthropologist Marvilla uh, Herfords and the uh, Lodipa kingdom located in the modern day Africans in the reign of Queen Medusa is reported to have taken as many as 15 wives. It is also considered an honor for a queen to choose young daughters as a wife. So many families sent their daughters to her for the promise of favorable tribal standings and ranks and reign queen reigns. Uh, and this is from 1936. She reigned from 1936 uh, to 2000 and 2001, after slavery or colonialism, a lot of arguments about practice of homosexuality is after um, is after being encountered by the fathers. Procreation was the highest values and the main priority of African cultures, and one had to go through different rites, which adult someone could get married. And again, you can not talk about marriage without talking about procreation. They go hand in hand, and while one I separate you, and when one uh, separated from societies to become an adult or she are learning a key thing, i.e. land laws, vital skills, formings, hunting, sewing, morality, sex relationships, which involves man and woman, which lead to the marriage of procreation, which very important for familiar extended families or community. I'll sum up what I'm saying. I did a lot of information. I mean, I actually did like a lot of research and a lot of documentation that people were talking about and people are regurgitating these practices that I found was after um, was doing foreign invasions, was doing colonialism. So I wanted to talk about the Ethiopian people. I wanted to talk about some of the, the, the people that they talk about in Ghana, the, um, dealing with the Ashanti uh, and the uh, the Akan tribe, the people in the, on the uh, Ivory Coast, um, the Dahomey tribe, that they are such, these are suggestions that they, they believe that these women married younger, younger women. Um, um, the, um, the rain queen, which there was different, there was, uh, lots of rain queens in South Africa and this particular rain queen, if she did practice these certain types of practices of same sex, this was so, this was also after colonialism. Um, and I just want to reiterate that procreation, I, I talk about this a lot, procreation, uh, I talk about marriage, marriage and procreation is in, inseparable. 
Um, you cannot separate the two. Anytime you talk about procreation, you have to talk about marriage. Anytime you talk about marriage, you have to talk about procreation. And most ethnic groups in Africa believe that it is the most highest value and it is one of the main priorities. And the reason why it is one of the main priority is because of um, the more the more hands that you have, the more things that you're able to accomplish, the more things that you're able to acquire. So children was just not um, for the family. It was also for the community, meaning that the more hands that I have, like I said, the more things that I'm able to um, I'm able to accomplish, the more things that the family, the extended family in the community able to do, the more things that I'm able to acquire, the more things that I'm able to do and acquire to, uh, leads to a better life for the family, the extended family, um, and for the community. And when you're dealing with these rites of passages, when you go to the adult rites of passages, anytime that one is separated, as I stated in my conclusion, is separated from the society, they go into what they call the sacred grove. You have Europeans call it the devil grove. And the only reason why they, I, and I'm not going to explain that, but I talked about this, why they talk about, why they use these terms um, devil. But they talk about um, they're being, uh, they, well, they're being secluded into what they call the sacred grove. And these sacred groves, some of these groves are schools or institutions. So they're going through their rites of passages and they're learning of the different skill sets. They're learning about the laws of the land, um, they're learning about moral ethics and edicts. They are learning skill sets as far as hunting, um, farming, agriculture, um, sewing. They learn about relationships. They learn about sex and they learn about marriage. And through marriage and sex equals children. Children equals better life. Children equals so many different it, uh, so many different benefits for the family and so many different benefits for the uh, community. This is why procreation or children is a asset to the family, extended family, and to the, um, into the community. So um, I mean, that's it. I mean, that, that's it. I, I, damn, I then skipped a whole bunch of uh, slides that I had in there, but these are my sources um, right here. I keep it paused for a minute. Anybody y'all uh, got anything, man, on the panel, man? Anybody in the chat got any questions? It's been quiet. Yeah, man, I got some, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I hope the ladies was paying attention attention three times a day when the night fall. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the time. Three times a day. Three times a day. Get your rounds in. Keep, your, keep happy, happy wife, happy life. Feed the hubby. Keep him happy. You know, all those good things. So we all know what you meant, man. This, I think this is your third or fourth presentation on procreation. And uh or uh, rejecting homosexuality in African culture prior to uh, colonialism. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's some interesting things in there. You know, you learn about people a lot of time. Like I said, when we get to talking about African culture, tradition, tradition and culture, and you start, uh, you start seeing some things, some, some, some things that you would like to imply into your daily routine, daily life, and. And, and, and customs and, and just reacclimate yourself back to those things. And then there's things that we talk about that people want to reject, you know, and that's part of research. And that's part of bringing forth this information is because, you know, you're not saying that you agree wholeheartedly with everything that what was going on with this particular uh, clan or, or what this tribe is doing and uh, what uh, these people doing back here over in the cut. You're not saying that what you bring in this, the the um the not so much romanticized, but both sides of the coin. And then people could take the information as they see fit. However, you do have to respect the people's culture. So, you know, if you one of those that uh 
despise uh, some of the things that was presented today, then, you know, you're on your own, you know? Yeah, and I just, like, cool. like, yeah, I just wanted to show, like you said, two sides of the coin, like a lot of the information that's coming out. I mean, is, you know, when people talking about, it, you know, they, they, they see, keep saying that this crap, and I could be wrong. I'm not, like I said, I could be wrong. Just the information, I mean, just me continuing and studying this subject, you know, and I'm seeing a lot of stuff. I'm seeing what a lot of people are saying about this group, about this group, about this country, and about this country. But the things that they saying, these things, these practices that that these that you know they claiming that these people are doing or suggesting that these people are doing, are they doing? You know, what I'm saying this is not. You know, this is pre. This is colonial. This is not pre-colonial. This is colonialists doing colonialism, and uh, this is through uh, slavery. So you start to see a lot of these activities or these practices starting to take place. You know what I'm saying? Doing um, the encounter by these different, these, um, through, um, through these different fathers. And then the only source that I found so far was this sand rock um, art by the sand people in Zimbabwe. But like I said, I can't, I try to do some research and try to find the uh, ex exact rock, sand rock, that they are talking about that is exhibiting um, same um, same sex. I hadn't found it. I mean, I looked for it and looked for it and looked for it. And I came across a few things, but it's not what um, you know uh, certain people are talking about uh, in this journal and this um, other book um, that I have, which refers to this same sand rock. And then this journal actually provided a picture and a picture that this journal actually provided. I mean, this is an Egyptian um, um, image. This has nothing to do with the um, sand people at all. So I don't know why did they put this um, picture um, into the um, into the journal. So and then I just wanted to highlight some of uh, some of the things uh, you know, some of the things that you know I've been hearing and through my research I came across with these different groups and try to get like some dates on some of these things so you can see that a lot of these dates. And a lot of the stuff that people are bringing up, you know what I'm saying, again, is doing colonialism or doing slavery or after colonialism and after um, slavery. I'm not trying to romanticize nothing to say that homosexuality don't exist in Africa. They do exist in uh, homosexuality, do exist in, uh, um, in Africa, but a lot of countries in Africa, um, you know, don't play that, you know, and out of the 54 countries in Africa, you only got 34 of those countries in Africa um, um, that is strict on, you know, strict on them, you know, so they have strict laws, you know, that you have to um, abide by. Some of them have laws that they don't even enforce and, you know, the practices of being still mm -hmm. practiced in certain countries. Go ahead. Somebody say something? Yeah, I've been waiting till you was done, but it looked like Sutek had something to say too. You trying to um say something, Sutek? Uh, no, nah, you can go ahead. I go at you. Okay. Um, and then I somebody checked the uh questions. I'm not on YouTube. I'm just in here on the hangout. They quiet. Um, <laughs> um, I do want to speak on the mischaracterization of African people. That's a big pet peeve of mine. Um, both being here in America as Black people, um, African descendants, we are mischaracterized and we are mislabeled and mistreated, right? But as well as when it comes to our customs as it relates to being on a continent, and when you see a quote-unquote African tribe, people, ethnic group, whatever you want to call it, and you call something that they're doing, one of their practices, you mislabel it. And being a professional musician, I've had many students over the years. And there's a couple instances that come to mind when, when I was looking at this presentation. I had a student years ago, um, a teenager, and we was doing, I forget whatever rhythm I was teaching, but I was talking about the good old people in Ivory Coast. And I've mentioned Zali uh, many a times. And it's an, a mass dance done for the paying tribute to women. It's honoring women. And 
So, you know, there's nothing new when it comes to African culture. Like, we got all types of ancestral veneration, and then we got all types of matri uh, matriarchal societies. And we have masks and rhythms dedicated just to the women. Because, once again, procreation is of the utmost importance, and we respect women because of their ability to bring forth life. Of course, we contribute to that, but they are the ones walking around for nine months going through all of the things physically that we do not have to endure. And so we pay homage to that. What this teenager told me, well, first he asked the question. He asked if, because the Zowley masquerade dance is done by men. It's not done by women. Now, there are women nowadays who dance it and who do it, but traditionally it was done by the men because, again, it's a paying homage and tribute. So the women have a chance to sit back and relax while the men are putting on a demonstration. They're having a participation in the act of paying tribute to the women. So the men are dressed up with the raffia, with the mask, and with the various everything else that goes along with the costume. You know, you have your, your, your raffia stuffing to emulate the breasts. You have the accentuated backside derriere parts. All of these are parts of the costume. And I've witnessed full masquerade dancers getting dressed for shows over the various shows I've done. So these are men dressing up in women's clothing, is my point. And the teenager asked me if the men were gay because they were dressing up in women's clothing. And I told him, no, that these men are not uh, gay because they're dressing up in the women's, you know, in the masquerade that pays homage to a woman. And the teenager actually didn't receive it well. He said, no, nah, that means you gay. If you dress up in women's clothes, that means you gay. End the discussion. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of that goes on a lot of the times when we're looking at African culture. And we need to be careful of that. Because what we perceive in the Western mind, even in a modern sense, ain't what's going on for them people. And they cultures and representation of who they are. Yeah, and that, that's what they was meaning, you know, with the cross dress. Your own, um, what I was talking about earlier, you know, and it's easy for people to exert. And I was, you know, talking about how um, they were suggesting these things because they was observing certain things. And some of these people that were suggesting these things, or get, you know, from their observation, and they began to write about it or whatever the case was, you know, they didn't never go and get a full understanding of it. And that was one of the reasons why you, you hear them saying that the men was cross-dressed. And I'm glad you brought that out. Because like you said, doing those different masquerades, they do dress as the women and they do have the mask is on in particular looking like the women. But it was, you know, in fact, um, honoring, um, the, um, honoring the women. So I'm glad. One of, the, one of the greatest examples of that is the Galede Festival, man, where, where it has to deal with honoring the women in the community, especially the mothers, because it has something to do with fertility. It also has something to do with uh, becoming a mother and the example and the emphasis that they put on motherhood. So uh, outside of, you know, uh, any deity that will coincide when you're talking about the Yoruba people. So, um, you know, it's, it's different different um, perspectives. So for people to misunderstand or, or misrepresent that, that's just out of ignorance, especially when you're watching a actual dance. The, the, the guys, they dress up, they put the mask on to represent the women, and then they sit there and they do these dances that ain't feminine at all, or the drum line is, is a particular way to entertain the people in the crowd in the community. You know what I'm saying? And they saying that these, these festivals Ward off evil spirits. Uh, the Galette Festival had, you know, the, all, all of this stuff has to do with ward off evil spirits. Um, uh, the anti-witch, you know, perspectives, all of these different things. But see, when you don't study Africa, or you don't study African culture or traditions, then you have no no reality of that, and you stuck with what you said is a Western perspective, a Western worldview, a Western thought process, which which dominates right now. So you can't get out of your own way and understand what they are trying to do and what they, you know, in, in these particular traditions and customs, because you're not a part of any particular tradition or custom. People think, and I, you know, we can argue this, this at a different point, but people think just because we got hip hop, that's, that's cultural. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a dress uh, and then you got music and all of these particular things. 
but it's you know to to Africans, uh, this is what culture and traditions is. It's not only putting on a festival, but it's also a way of life daily and consistently. So it makes it a religion to them. It makes them. It makes it a um, a has spiritual connotations to the things that they actually do because they live it, breathe it, do it, act it, uh, portray it consistently it's not a once a week thing it's not when an album drop thing it's not when you're in a club once or twice a week thing it's not to uh, go out thing it is actually something that's real tangible and effective and a part of a real culture real traditions with real value to the people I'm gonna just add this in because uh I feel like it's gonna be somebody out there that try to like find some type of example of homosexuality pre-colonial to try to prove you wrong. And just to cut that short, I'm pretty sure uh, none of us on this panel are, is saying that there is absolutely no case of homosexuality in Africa in pre-colonial times. What we are saying is, it's not a part of the culture. It's not accepted in the culture. Anybody can find a lone wolf and try to base a case off of that lone wolf. But was it part of the culture? Was it accepted? Was it promoted? Now you can go to Greek culture and see them uh, in art and in, in their pottery uh, depicting themselves grown men with little boys, pederasty. So that would be uh, accepted as part of the culture. It's not a lone wolf. This is being promoted. That is how you determine whether it is accepted in the culture or it's just a lone wolf out here doing his own thing. Just because you find one person or one or two cases don't mean that this is, uh, is accepted by these people in general. So I just wanted to make that clear to cut off any um, opportunity for somebody to try to come and uh, knock this presentation. Oh. What's name had a comment in here, man. Uh, I don't know what he was trying to ask me. I don't know if he's still in here. What piece of your mind for you still in here? He said, speak on the the filet and the agape love. <laughs> I don't know what you. Oh, I don't know what you're asking me. Uh, y'all know what he's saying. Speak on filet, filet, and agape love. What is filet? Anybody know what that is? I don't know what that is. We were the question, uh, hush your mouth. Are you still in here, man? I think it's, um, like, it's some Greek stuff. Well, I, I know from my lang from my knowledge of various languages um, across the globe, phile or fit philae. Yeah, that's definitely I would say going towards Greek because they don't even sound like any of the languages in Africa that I've studied. Not to say that it ain't, but an agape, well. Unconditional love. There are terms and customs, and 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 basically, um, not to get into what we were talking about before we went live. But Brother Kofi was just expressing issues with reciprocity between people, and agape has to do with unconditionalism. And I won't say that we're gonna say that that exists in the cultures, but we have reciprocity is what African cultures are about. And so ancestral veneration, divination, and all of those things, we're constantly going, we're, we're, we're dealing with the constant flow of energy is what it's about. It all comes back to energy. Um, and the reason why I wanted to add this was because Brother Sean talks a lot about the masquerades um, warding off evil spirits. And I'm very well versed with that because I play rhythms for that purpose. In fact, I, because of the quarantine, I'm mad that I can't go play somewhere because right now during this time, 
we'd be playing a whole lot of a specific type of rhythm that I can think of right now, actually about four or five during this time, because right now we need a lot of that. An evil spirit in Africa is a disease. It is drought. It is a person who decides that he wants to go ahead and take a few apples from the market. Um, all of these things are evil spirits because spirit is a person. It is a, 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 a force in nature that you do not control, but it acts on itself. It is, you know, the overall condition of the climate, like all of these things at once at the same time are spirits. And so we're not spooky when we say warding off evil spirits. We're talking about actual things that is affecting people in their ecology. Um, and dealing with reciprocity, you have to give to receive. So when it comes to procreation and marriage, it's about a give and receive type of thing. Um, in terms of for the purpose of proliferating and continuing to perpetuate your existence. So in Africa, it's about well, we need to procreate and continue existing. And that's a part of the culture. Not what people do behind closed doors in their homes. That's a different conversation. We're talking about what is the overall objective of the village? You're trying to survive, number one. So that's what's promoted and pushed, survival. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to reshare my screen, man. Y'all let me know on my screen, Sharon. Let me see your reference page. Yeah, I see it. All right, I'll see you on the other end. Uh, but uh, what's the name said? I, we answered this question. Let me know when y'all see it on in uh back on on in Facebook. I don't see it. I don't know if I'm still. Okay, I see it now. During delay, but um. Yeah, he said we answered this question. Um, and man, I apologize too. I I won't do this no more. Um, kind of unprepared, unprepared. I've been running through, I'm trying to do so much at one time, and I just I want my best today. I feel like, but um. Anyway, man, if anybody ain't got any questions, if y'all can see here on the thing, man, um, you know, we're going to keep telling y'all, telling y'all and promoting y'all with Kofi Paisai TV Family and Affiliate Research Team. Um, um, new book drops May the 25th, so please support and pre-orders. Uh, we'll be, be uh, coming soon to the new website. Sean talked about the book um, um, earlier on Master Warrior Clan channel when he was presenting. Um, today, so please go back and check out that uh, Yaka presentation that he did um, today on my Warrior Clan. But when the show got ready in, he talked about um, the book. Um, so y'all be on the lookout for uh, Spears of the Masi, a historical survey of the minds of African warrior scholars, um, volume one. It is by the Kofi Paisa team. It's not, it's the Kofi Paisa team. It's presented by the Masi Warrior Clan um, um, because me, Sean, and then we have some, um, work by brother Ben who actually blessed the book. Um, he has some work, um, in the book as well. So please, uh, support, um, hopefully in another week or so, maybe, um, next Saturday, um, not this Sunday coming up, but the Sunday after next or the Saturday after next, we should have the website up. The web shot, uh, website should be running, um, and you can pre-order the book um, off of off of the website. We're giving uh, to, uh, what what is it? What do you say? What we say? Twenty percent discount if they pre-order the book before May the twenty fifth. Yep, twenty percent. Yeah, so twenty percent. We agree, you know. Yeah, yeah, twenty percent off the book. If y'all purchase it off the website, I mean, pre order off the website um, before Mar uh, May the 25th. So please support, 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 support. Um, um, the whole Kofi Pice, our research team contributed, me, uh, Brother uh, Satepin Ra, Brother Sutek, Brother Vasa, Brother Sean, 
um, Brother T'Challa, all contribute as well as Brother Ben, also contribute to the book. So please support the book um, when it come out. Again, you can order it off the website or you can get it off of Amazon.com. Um, hey, Kofi, real quick to add to your um, to your thanks, I want to give thanks to Brother Asar as well for his contribution, for helping out with everything, you know. Yeah. Um, just didn't want to not uh, mention him. Oh, yeah, shoot. I forgot about our Brother Asar. But, yeah, peace to Brother Asar M Hotel, man, for helping out, man, on the back end, man, with us, man. So, yeah, man, I don't see anything else in the chat. Um, let me stop sharing my show. I mean, stop sharing this thing. Um, that's all, man. <laughs> That ain't how you do that, man. You know what I'm saying? A side MO chip is an intricate part of what we're trying to do. Not only are we actually, is he actually trying to do something special for us, he's also an inspiration behind the majority of us as far as us putting this work together. So, a side MO chip, I want to thank you for your contributions to the community and the dedication and the drive you show to continue to push knowledge forward. By uh, it's already the first quarter of the year is in the door. We're working on the second quarter. You've already dropped two books and possibly a third by the end, depending on if y'all going to come with the full volume of the repairing, I mean, uh, the meaning of the place name, Kimmy, the full treatment. So I don't know if that's still out there or if you have something else in the work that you're going to drop out. But I do want to say, you know, thank you for your contributions. Uh, thank you for the support. You know what I'm saying? We see you pop up out at nine and then it show us love on the Masi. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have no problem with shouting us out. You get emails about us. You tell us about it. You know, you're in constant con uh, conversations with uh, Brother Black Panther, even Kofi as of lately. You know what I'm saying? All of us really, you know what I'm saying? You reached out. I, I bought the book. You reached out to me. You said, hey, which one of these addresses you need me to send it to? Because you got two. <laughs> you know, you just wanted to make sure everything was good to go as far as what was showing up in your system and and how all my other stuff been coming. You were sending it to one address. But, yeah, you know, thank you, brother, for your diligent work, your hard work, you know what I'm saying, that you continue to do daily and trying to show us a different way to actually bring this scholarship forward. So I look at you as an as an actual scholar leading the community, and we appreciate your contributions. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's it. That's how you do it, I guess. Yeah, that's how you do it. All right, man. Well, peace, man. Um, we want to say appreciate everybody for uh, tuning in. Um, like I say all the time, y'all could have been doing anything else with your time. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in, man. Um, uh, we appreciate the support. Um, you know, we'll see y'all next week, man. Y'all be safe. Uh, practice social distance. Uh, self quarantine. Wash your hands and all that good stuff. Keep your kids in the house. Keep yourself in the house. And that's it, man. Well, peace, y'all.